Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for the 13th of February, 2020. And just like Don's video last night reminded us, another day, another rally. Even though the equity markets might not look like they rallied today, they sure stalled the losses that happened on a gap down open and made, even though again it might not look like it, new all time highs. That's the case in the NASDAQ. That's the case just about in the Russell fell in the Dow futures fell a little bit shy in the Dow and Russell just keeps on with a little bit of a relative weakness. Keep that in mind. It's been a broader theme that while the other markets, this is a weekly chart, S&P at least is making new all time highs. NASDAQ's making new all time highs. And in fact, this rally here is comparable to that of early 2019, but it looks a little stronger in terms of point values. And the Dow also finally, finally pierced out new all-time highs, but the Russell index is not. It's lagging behind. So that's kind of the overarching view that we'll take a look at. Jumping inside of our scan, just one little quick reminder. We take a look at the stocks in the S&P 500 that are making new, in some cases, all-time highs, but joining the market at new 52-week highs. And as that scan pops up, we see that a couple days ago in a prior video, Around 80 stocks made new highs with the S&P. This time it's 66. Not Nothing uh, to sneeze at there or nothing to sneeze at for sure. But nonetheless, here we are. So we segment these new all-time highs in terms of the sector grouping. So today you see that the market itself was closed, at least off the highs. Let me just show a kind of a quick overview of the chart before we talk about this. Even though, correct, we did close off the highs the market pierced those new all-time highs. Just kind of to cross-check that mid-session today. Okay, back to the scan tool. Stocks joined them at least some point in today's session per the little scan at new highs. So the groupings inside the market include industrials, discretionary staples, healthcare, financials, and information technology, including utilities. And I like to see the list this way to see where the strength is coming from or where the money is coming from. That's a clue. And otherwise, by, which is the purpose of tonight's video, market capitalization. So the ones that join the market at the new all-time or 52-week highs include MasterCard, United Health, Home Depot, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Adobe, NVIDIA, which just had a butterfly call out, Costco, warehouse name, Next Era Energy, and others, including Lowe's and Fidelity and Intuit and Duke Energy Dominion, etc. So while we won't be charting those in tonight's video, we will be taking a look at the bigger picture daily chart and little callouts or trade strategies in market cap names. So what I'll show in the video is stocks in the S&P 100 that are divided by market cap, or I should say sorted by market cap. So quick little check on that. Market cap tools right here. I like to use watch lists and then go from there. So they are sorted clicked and sorted by market cap. And we'll make that where the names are a little bit more visible. So the first up on our list for trade callouts is Apple. Apple computers. It is one that continues to get stronger. So it's a strong stock getting stronger. We like to look at the daily chart for in-out spreads. That's mainly what I discuss with you in evening videos, or the tactic at least. We talk multiple strategies, but are multiple uh, concepts. But the strategy I always drill back into are bullish or bearish type of in out spreads or verticals in this case bull verticals those are purchased or put on into rising moving averages or on pullbacks or retracements in ongoing uptrends so sorted by market cap apple did not today at least make a new 52 week high but it was just a little bit shy of that in yesterday's session and again the concept is strong stocks tend to get stronger and levels in the stratosphere or the atmosphere that really have no overhead resistance, well, the market can keep going higher and higher and higher. And so we join these trending stocks, not by just uh, lighting our hair on fire and getting bullish, but by risk control. Again, using spread, that's one way to limit risk, but the other way is to buy on pullbacks as opposed to just blind, bullishly buying. Microsoft is another 
and it bucked the uptrend or strengthened, I suppose, and just really took off like a rocket ship. Not like Tesla, but nonetheless, still I continued going higher. Not really a trade into here, and a couple of sessions ago made a new high. But again, what do we want to do? Engage the market, engage the pullback, trade on the pullback, establish positions on the pullback. Very, very, very aggressive traders can attempt a short when the market is so overextended. But again, do that with put spreads, in out spreads, as opposed to shorting shares because markets can go much higher. For example, Microsoft here gave a little sell signal, a little down day. That was a three to four point down day. And you think the market's gonna pull back, so let's all get short. And the market rose 10 more dollars. So that gets a little inherent risk and danger to shorting a market that is uptrending. We would rather, from a risk reward standpoint, join or buy, engage on the pullbacks. Amazon's the third largest market cap. And it's just one of these, uh, like Microsoft, jump gap earnings go. And it really hasn't looked back that much. Dangerous to short it, but it's a little late to get the pullback. So on these top three candidates, they're all similar. They're all tech names and we're about to see Google, Facebook and others, but there are just other opportunities. So in a stock that's this overextended, we do wanna join it long, but we cannot buy rules or by risk control, just close your eyes and buy. So we don't want to necessarily put positions on into the stratosphere here. Goog and Google, which is our kind of tech search name. Now this is again a reminder of why we look to put positions on with pullbacks or retracements. For me, it's that 20 and 50 exponential or you can use trend lines or the like. Strong price, strong volume, rising moving averages. That gives us little adaptive trend lines or adaptive spots to get long. And the case is there. Remember, not all stocks are doing this. So this, these big names, I'm just sorting tonight's video by where these big top market cap names are. And that gives us a sense of why the market's doing what it's doing. Again, most, the market at least, follows these main stocks by market cap at least. So Facebook, gave us a pullback. It is not one of these stocks that's all time high. It's not, it's close, but not quite there. So again, pullback plays, retracement trades, entering on the pullback, that's the name of the game for these type of trades. It's left the station, given that it's halfway back to the target, and the target is prior highs. So Facebook had a bull bounce buy off the 200 per share level. Berkshire Hathaway is Warren Buffett's flagship company. We probably won't trade this because it's Berkshire B, and those are the little smaller shares of a 200 some odd thousand dollars per share uh, stock. So anyway, same type of logic. Trending stock, bull flag, enter on the pullback and manage the position accordingly. Visa is another financial slash technology name, but we think of it mainly as technology, credit cards, etc. And it, again, it just launched. So entry points recently at least have been pullbacks or retracements to these rising averages. JP Morgan is another type of financial company that's in the list and it is consolidating at the highs after a strong end to 2019. Johnson & Johnson is a defensive name, consumer staples name, and there we see our first opportunity at least from these top market cap names to get in on a valid pullback. This is what we're looking for. This is what we want to see. So any type of spread based off of 150, no guarantee, but again, that's a pivot point, a spot to manage risk, a spot to get in to a rising market. And other examples would include earlier in January and then later in January. The spread can be constructed to go back to 155, 154 and playing off of a construction of 150. MasterCard similar to uh, Visa to an extent, but again, not much to talk about at the moment. We'll finish up with Walmart, which is a popular retailer, and it's the first name, second, I guess, on the main market cap list that is not jumping up to new all-time highs. But it is on a pullback, it is on a retracement, it is on a flag trend, strong trend type of buy, as we can see from prior examples in the uptrend. On the weekly chart shows us a better perspective there. We'll update our trend line and we see it returning a back above 
that lower trend line or lower growth point. So trades, for me at least, with this type of strategy, there are plenty of strategies, but my bread and butter is to get trades on and trending stocks on the pullbacks or retracements. But this is just a quick market cap centric overview of stocks driving the market and sort of answers a question at least a little bit. Why the heck do we keep making new highs all the time? These stocks can give us a little bit of a clue to that. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with your Theo Notley video for February 13th, 2020.